The Haunting in Connecticut. It sounds exciting just from the name. But what if I tell you this movie is based on a true story? Will you freak out? This movie is based on a haunted house in Connecticut, America. If you are interested, you can search the related informations. The story happened in 1987. Matt has cancer even though he is still young. To receive chemotherapy conveniently. Matt's mother rents a house near the hospital. Theoretically the location of the house is really good. The rent can't be so cheap, surely there are some problems, but because of their financial situation, they don't have a lot of money. Besides, because of the high bills for Matt's daily chemotherapy, she can only choose this house, but on the first night, when Matt and his mother move in, a strange event happens. At midnight Matt notices a series of sound. He follows the sound down to the basement. There is a mirror in front of him. Matt sees a bloody human face. Luckily this is only a nightmare. The next day while cleaning the house, Sarah finds a bunch of old photos. Maybe the previous owner left them there. But those pictures are so creepy, they look like memorial photos. This annoys Sarah so much so she throws them all into the bin. At noon Matt's father and younger siblings also move in. The two siblings happily choose their favorite room. But Matt chooses the basement to be his room. He doesn't want his family members to hear him painfully scream at night. Even though Sarah doesn't understand. But she can't heartlessly refuse. There is a glass door in the room. That can't be opened no matter how. Matt comes closer to look inside. Suddenly he freaks out. He sees his mother wipe the floor by blood. But doesn't see that when he looks again. The plates which are organized neatly. Are broken out of nowhere. Matt first thinks because of his illness. He is hallucinating. So he doesn't say anything. In the evening Matt is led by some type of power. He gets up from his bed while still closing his eyes. When he opens his eyes, two human shadows appear on the glass door. One of the two shadows also sees Matt. Matt's consciousness. Suddenly merges into that body and he sees a horrifying scene. A man with beard and glasses is carving letters on the corpse with a knife. He even cuts the eyelid of the corpse off. This terrifies Matt. He wakes up in horror. Luckily this is also a nightmare. But this nightmare feels so real. This time Matt realizes that the glass door has opened by itself. He goes inside. Just like that, he is in there throughout the night. The next day people finds Matt in that room. Peter also realizes that this room was a morgue. Only that it has been abandoned. But the devices inside are still there. In the evening the whole family sit together. And decide to continue to live here. Until Matt's illness is completely treated. Right at this time Matt becomes semi-conscious. He sees another scene. A bunch of people sit together. They are holding a seance. The medium is a boy called Jonah. Matt tells this to his family members, but they assume that, it might be his hallucination, due to the medication that he takes. The next day Matt meets a man who is also in the hospital for cancer. The man is a pastor. After hearing the story of Matt, Nicholas says that it is not a hallucination. Maybe his house really has ghosts living in. When people are near the end of their life, many see things that normal people can't. Nicholas gives Matt a card, tells Matt to contact him if he needs anything. As the time goes by, the spirits in Matt's house is getting more and more active. One day Matt is playing hide and seek with his siblings, the medium Jonah who appeared in his dream suddenly appears in the house, and is pulled down to the basement by someone. Matt follows him down to the basement. When they go inside the morgue, a lot of corpses appear out of nowhere. The corpses can even move, they surround Matt. When Matt tries his best to push a corpse away, he realizes he is pushing away his brother. The family members all think that he has lost his mind. Matt is hopeless can only find Nicholas. Nicholas tells Matt that the ghost follows you, but doesn't harm you. Probably because it wants something from you. Maybe you can ask what the ghost wants. Matt hesitates. In the evening when Matt is exercising, a black burnt face appears in front of him. Matt controls his fear and asks what it really wants. The black face doesn't say a word. Only screams then disappears. But the strange event doesn't stop. Spirits start to disturb Matt's family members. His younger sister is playing at the attic. She is walking. When she falls down to the crack on the floor, his younger brother is also locked in the crematory. After saving his sister, Matt finds a trunk there. Inside the trunk, there are a few pieces of objects and some old photos. After seeing the photos Matt is horrified. Because he has saw this scene before. In his dream which also means that. The dream that he had before are actually real. Because of some reasons. He can see it once again. To clarify the truth, he brings his cousin to the library to look up the information. And find out that the previous owner of the house is Aikman. He was a medium and Jonah is his assistant. They used their psychic ability to help human to contact with the spirit. After that Aikman invented a way to increase the power. Which was to make Jonah's body. Released a thing called Qi energy to increase the power. However, during a seance, Jonah's psychic power went wrong. Four people who attended were all dead. Jonah also went missing. Some time went by. When people were about to build a highway and about to relocate the graves. They discovered that 100 corpses in the graves were gone and were replaced with sandbags. Matt guesses the corpse were stolen by Jonah and Aikman. And the reason might have been to increase their psychic ability. In the evening Matt comes to Nicholas once again. To tells him what he knows. Being a pastor he knows quite a lot about this. He tells Matt, that the objects are actually humans' eyelids. Aikman used all those corpses, to carry out an evil magic. Normally people's eyes are closed when they die. But after cutting off the eyelids, the dead can't close their eyes. The soul will remain in the body. Through the drawing slashed onto the corpse, they have taken advantage of these souls, to boost Jonah's psychic ability, and made more money in that way. 
Those corpses might be hidden somewhere in the house. Then Sarah comes home. She thinks of Nicholas as a scammer and kicks him out. The Haunting in Connecticut. This movie the context of the movie is a haunted house in Connecticut. After Sarah kicks Nicholas out of the house, at midnight she is woken up by a series of sound. She sits up to see. There is a corpse flashes in front of her. She quickly turns on the light to see. But there is nothing. Soon after there are electricity explosions in the house. All the electric devices in the house explode. This time Sarah believes that there are ghosts in the house. So she hurriedly invites Nicholas over. Nicholas holds the device in his hand. And find the ashes of Jonah in the crematory. As long as they take the ashes of Jonah away. As Nicholas is collecting the ashes and bones. A burnt corpse comes closer to Matt. This is Jonah's spirit. After Nicholas has brought the ashes and bones out of the room. Jonah's spirit also disappears. The room is back to normal. After getting the job done. Nicholas takes Jonah's remains away. But the nightmare doesn't stop. It only just begins. Not long after Nicholas leaves. On Matt's body there are a lot of strange drawings. His family quickly brings him to the hospital. Jonah's spirit also follows them to the hospital. Matt is not scared anymore. He is going to die anyway. There is nothing left to be scared of. He comes up to Jonah. Looks straight into Jonah. Jonah tilts his head. Finally Matt can see the whole story. During Jonah's last seance. Because the released energy was too strong. He couldn't control it and created a huge explosion. Except from Jonah all the people there died, including Aikman. Jonah also couldn't escape his death. Vengeful spirits got out and locked Jonah in the crematory to cremate him. After Matt's family moved in. Jonah's spirit wanted them to leave. So he didn't stop scaring them. Now that Jonah's remains has been brought out of the house, there is nothing to bound these vengeful spirits. It will be dangerous to live in the house. Meanwhile Matt's cousin is nearly suffocated to death while showering. The spirits has started. They want to kill whoever lives in the house. After knowing the truth, he comes back home with an axe. After chasing the family members out of the house, he follows the instruction of Jonah's spirit. He breaks the living room wall, reveals the corpses, one by one. Turns out the missing corpses are all in the wall. If they want to destroy the evil spirits, the only way is to burn the corpses. Matt discovers some alcohol, pours it on those corpses and starts the fire. A big fire starts to spread. When Matt is about to go out, those spirits appear once again. They surround Matt reach out to him with their scary hands. The mother standing outside hears a desperate scream. Despite everything, runs into the house. She hugs Matt, who is scrawling on the floor. They hide under the table. Those spirits appear once again. After seeing Matt, they disappear in the flame. In the last scene of the movie, the firefighters arrive on time to save Matt and his mother. The miracle is Matt doesn't have cancer anymore. They say Jonah's spirit has treated Matt. But I think when Matt burnt those corpses. And released the spirits to pay him back. They treated the cancer for Matt. When they reached out to Matt with their hands. They was treating his illness. From that, we can see. There are good and evil spirits. Ghosts also know to return the favor.